Now, News Channel 8 Midday. That for you this playoff Friday midday. Details on a less invasive brain surgery. A neurosurgeon, neurosurgeon, I beg your pardon, from MedStar Georgetown is using the procedure right now to treat tumors and other conditions. We'll hear how it works. Also, traditional brain surgery often involves what's called a craniotomy. It's a large sur surgical incision through the skull so physicians can access the brain. It is invasive major surgery. But there's a new technique for certain conditions that is much less invasive. It's a new field exploring less invasive ways to treat diseases or tumors in the brain. And joining us to talk about this uh, in minimally invasive surgery is uh, Dr. Amjad Anazi of uh, MedStar Georgetown. I want to make sure I got the hospital right. Of course. Doctor, this is going to surprise a lot of people. If you have a brain tumor, the notion is I have to go through the skull this way. Sure. And for some, you certainly do. But for others, you can actually go, as it turns out, through the nose. Explain a little bit how this works. That's correct. So, you know, minimally invasive brain surgery uh, is a variety of techniques. One of the most important ones is the one that you mentioned where you introduce a very small camera through one nostril uh, and then instruments through the other nostril, uh, allowing you to get to very deep areas in the brain without disturbing any of the surrounding normal structures. We are able to do that in, in a lot of different kinds of surgery. Uh, uh, you can do knee surgery using what they call a telescope. It's called a trocar. It's a long tube with a camera on That's it. That's exactly right. And you can right. do the same sort of thing. Is that what we're talking about Sure. Here? So we, we do abdominal surgery that mm -hmm. way as well. There's laparoscopic general surgery. Yep. Um, and, and, you know, the, the, the common thread here is advances in technology, you know. And so uh, all advances in brain surgery have been preceded by advances in technology. Uh, and it's really, you know, that's one factor that has allowed us to do this operation. The other factor is collaboration with other specialists. Uh, and so there are a variety of other specialists that we work with, surgical subspecialists. We work as a team, multidisciplinary. Uh, and so I wouldn't be able to do any of these operations through the nose without my ENT partner, Dr. DeClotz sure. at Georgetown. One of the things, too, I think that probably has come a long way is actually being able to visualize what it is that you're going after of, of using uh, the, the various kinds of, 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 of imaging techniques that are available. Absolutely. Absolutely, and the quality of the imaging has only continued to improve. Uh, intraoperative neuronavigation has allowed us to utilize these very small openings to take out very large tumors and know exactly where we are in the, in the brain. Sometimes the technology sort of outstrips our ability to process it. Do you have to do something of a, of a selling job on a patient when you say, I can get this, but it's probably going to be in a different way than you think I'm going to get it? Sure, sure. You know, many, many patients do a lot of their research before they come and see us. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you'd be surprised how many patients actually specifically ask for these uh, less invasive procedures. And then there are some patients that, you know, are, uh, are flabbergasted by the idea of going through the nose to take out a brain tumor. We, some of these procedures, and you, you talked about a, a number of them, you can do them uh, in the in the chest, in the, the, the cavities, and, and the, the, the kind of, of uh, orthopedic procedures are almost day surgeries. You go in and you go home. Can sure. you do that here as sure. well? Sure. So typically with brain surgery, we don't send patients home the same day. However, the, these less invasive techniques have allowed us to keep patients in the hospital for a much shorter period of time, uh, primarily because there's less pain associated with it, less blood loss. Uh, these patients are able to leave the hospital sooner and get back to their normal activities sooner. And we also talk about, you know, there's physical trauma of surgery, mm -hmm. but then uh, we also talk about psychological trauma of surgery. Uh, and uh, our, our goal, our responsibility is to utilize all available technology in order to reduce both the physical trauma of an operation as well as the psychological trauma to that patient. And if I'm not waking up with half my hair having to have been shaved and a big surgical incision on the side, that has to be a, a, a big help in the recovery. Absolutely, absolutely. If you look yourself in the mirror and half your head is shaved and you've got a large incision in your scalp, and that's an operation that oftentimes is necessary. But when it's avoidable, I think we should do our best to avoid it. It's another indication of how far and how fast things are coming. Doctor, thank you so much. I really appreciate your joining My pleasure, us. my pleasure.